But just think of one little number. The amount of cement that was used in China over the last three years was more than the total amount of cement used by the United States in the 20th century. Fast forward that number across the world and you, you come up against some very frightening numbers, especially when you start considering what's going on in Africa. Africa now has an urban population of roughly 400 million people. That means there are more people living in cities in Africa now than in North America, than in Europe, than in Latin America. And yet the projections are that this is going to go up to 1.2 billion people over the next four decades. In other words, another 800 million Africans living in cities. Well, I think what's going to start to happen is a, uh, is a, is a combination of uh, negative dynamics, include, especially climate change, shortage of certain resources, water, uh, are going to start combining to push up the cost of key uh, resources and therefore urban living. That's going to result in conflicts. And out of that, hopefully, something productive uh, can emerge. I don't think it's going to happen in a technocratic, planned, expert sitting around figuring it out. The big game, the big game of the future is supposed to be put your money into urban infrastructures, whether it's the Boston Consulting Group, the Booz, Booz Allen Group, Siemens, uh, Semex, uh, IBM. It's all the same story. Put your money into urban, in, urban infrastructures. The, what the latest Siemens report is called, wait for it, is your city investor ready? I think the strategic decisions are going to basically uh, revolve around urban infrastructures. What kind of urban infrastructures and technologies are we going to select that are going to equip cities for the long run, uh, taking into account the low carbon transition and the necessity to use resources more efficiently. If we make the long choices now, and given that infrastructures last for 60, 70, 80, sometimes 100 years, you get locked into futures you don't want. So African cities uh, originated in colonial control and administration uh, and exploitation of resources for elites. To turn that around is a major challenge, but one of the key things that needs to be done is to fundamentally change our conception of urban governance. Right across the board, all the multilateral agencies, most all the development age agencies, almost all the academic analyses assume that the reason we have messed up African cities that just can't get their act together is that you just can't implement the unitary, centrally planned, coordinated conception of urban governance that happened in Europe. Somehow there needs to be a municipality with an integrated network that everybody gets connected together and all other forms are just temporary and, and will eventually uh, 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 move aside. I, th I think for me the, the, the best is the way in which unlikely coalitions come together uh, quite often, quite unexpectedly to say, ah, we just can't carry on this way, let's figure out an alternative. That's, that's what energizes me, that's what I like best, that's what I like doing. Yeah.